So how's it going? And we're back with the new Skyrim Anniversary Edition and taking a look at an interesting mod called Gallows Hall. Now this one gives you quite a lot of stuff like a, a new player home, two unique helmets and a really decent unique stuff. And you can also create one of three permanent undead summons, a Mistman, a Boneman or a Wrathman. And you get all this stuff by completing the Dreams of the Dead quest. And I'll show you how to get this done nice and quickly. Okay, so Gallows Hall itself is located at Mara's Eye Pond, which is a small pond a short distance east of Gallows Rock and not too far from Windhelm. It's also the home to Mara's Eye Den, a vampire's lair, and you'll find the access to it through a trapdoor found on the small island in the lake. And once you're on location, just simply enter the hall. Okay, nothing much outside here to worry about. A few mud crabs. Obviously, if you go into the Morris Eye Den, you'll meet a couple of vampires. Um, but you can deal with them if you want to. But if you don't want to, yeah, just head in. And go straight to the body on the floor. And read one of the letters. And that starts the dreams of the dead. And now we've got to do is uh, read the journal. Oh, if you look, everything's flying around as well. It's actually really nicely done, this. Okay, so when this happens, everything's going to go into a kind of black and white. It's not really coloured black, I just washed out kind of stuff. And then you read his first clue. So you have to pick off four torches off the pillars and it's quite easy. So you start off with uh, Morthal, uh, then Falkreath, and just keep on running around till you find there's Falkreath. Next is a Nightingale in, there you go, and finally the force of Dunstead. So everything gets pretty much back to normal now. So you've got to pick up the staff. And equip it. And then you're going to reanimate this skeleton. Now it's always a pain user in three um, in, in third person. And also the staff, you actually have to load it or charge it for quite a long time before it works. Eventually you get there. Oh, I tested the staff out, by the way, it's pretty good. And so you grab the key and then run to the safe. And here you pick up the second coat clue and you also get uh, the first unique helmet. We'll look at that later on. So you've got to find your way, your way to the Dream Lord and just activate the Shrine of Vermina. I think that's how you say it. And quick look at the effects you get that. The illusion spells cost 5% less to cast. So, yay. And then you go and have a bit of a kip. And there's a bedroll just down here. Okay, so you're locked in now. You're in a dream state, so you have to wander around and find the crystals. There you go. Don't get too far ahead. I can't remember where the third one is, it's got to be around here somewhere. Yeah. And read the instructions. So you've got to put the, uh, actually pick them up, cool. 
and magically the fourth soul gem is found there after reading the letter so just simply place them in the holders the altar of the revenant now before we actually get to the really interesting things with this mod we'll start we'll take a quick look at the player home and to be honest i'm not going to spend too much time on the home it's on three levels the main hall the bedroom and a basin and we'll be looking at it in a little bit more detail later it does have everything you need like some smithing tools alchemy and enchanting tables so crafting options and storage are there alongside a bed that gives you the well rested bonus uh, despite all that, it really is an uncomfortable home for day-to-day -day gameplay. It's just a bit messy and unappealing. And sadly, you can't upgrade or change anything, which is, or at least as far as I can see, uh, which is a shame as it could have been a great place if it had been done right. And to be honest, I'd strongly suggest you skip this and just settle up Mere Watch, which is simply far, far better in aesthetics and functionality. And from your bedroom, head down towards the basement to one of the stars of the show, and that's the Bornfetter Forge, where you create your undead summons. Now, you can need quite a few ingredients for these, but uh, there are a few in here to get you started, and I'll go through the recipes uh, later on. But make sure you grab what you can here. And whatever you do, make sure you grab this spell. You probably will, if you're going to use these, you probably will need this. Uh, in fact, it's very important. And there's a kind of a manual of uh, sorts just here. Um, but as I said before, I'll give you the recipes later on. And uh, once you've done that, just uh, head over to the Bone Forge. Now, I'll go through the actual details on these summons later on. Uh, but first up, we'll make the Miss Man, and for that, you're going to need a Soul Husk, a Soul Gem, and Bone Meal. Put the ingredients on the appropriate plates, and then just simply activate the Bone Forge. And voila, you've got yourself a Miss Man. Next up is the uh, bone man. The ingredients for this are already in the uh, basement. And for him, you're gonna need uh, bone meal, soul gem, and frost salts. Again, put them on the appropriate platters and activate the forge. And finally, uh, the most powerful of the three, the Wrathman, uh, or Wrathman, sorry. You need a Soul Gem, a Nord Helmet, Frost Salts, Bone Mill, and a Soul Husk. And you can simply activate the Bone Forge, and you get this dude. Okay, let's take a quick look at what you get with this mod. Now, obviously, we touched on the home itself, which, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, but the first thing up is a Bloodworm Helm. And the Bloodworm Helm is an artifact helmet created by Manig Marco, the King of Worms. It's a light helmet which is dual enchanted with conjuration spells costing 25% less to cast. And damage uh, against undead is increased by 25%, which is kind of uh, goes against the Helm Law, which um, originally it says if the wearer is undead, the damage is 25% greater. Um, I suppose in Skyrim that would leave you as a vampire, I guess. Anyway, that being said, its uh, damage against the undead is increased by 25%. The armor rating is a 15 and a weight of 5, and improving it. Uh, it requires a two a bone mill and the arcane blacksmith's perk. Now it's a nicely detailed helmet um, with a fairly decent, albeit kind of niche, enchantments. Uh, but it would tie in nicely with the bone wolf and some silver weapons for a tomb raider kind of uh, role-playing character. So yeah, I actually kind of like this. But it is a bit niche. And next up is the Helm of Orain Bearclaw, which again is a dual enchanted heavy helmet, giving you 20% faster stamina regeneration and increases your stamina by 70 points. Uh, it's got an armor rating of 22, which is pretty good. 
and a weight of eight and improving the helm of um, a rim bear claw requires two a bone mill and the arcane blacksmith uh, perk uh, another nicely detailed helmet this time with a kind of more generic enchantments and it's good for sword and board or two-handed characters uh, i reckon it looked pretty good with forsworn type armor so yeah not a bad little helmet and now we're starting to get to the more interesting stuff, such as the Staff of Worms. Now, this is a powerful staff, apparently once owned by Manny Marco, the King of Worms. And it will reanimate a dead body, and the reanimated corpse will become your permanent ally. And that's the key word there, permanent. Now, I checked this out as far as I can at the level my character is. And I was able to reanimate low-level vampires and a rift and guard, which could be any level between 20 and 50. But I'm assuming this staff can reanimate much higher level characters, which could make this very, very interesting indeed. Um, if anyone tests this further, then let me know in the comments below. And now we get to what's possibly the star of this particular uh, mod. You also get the opportunity to create one of three types of permanent undead summons. Now, each requires differing ingredients. I'll go into specifics later. But all are influenced by, or possibly influenced by, the following perks. Uh, the first up, which definitely will work, the Dark Souls perk, which adds an extra 100 points of health to the summons. You definitely want that. Um, and possibly, my character isn't at this level so I can't check it, the Twin Souls perk allows you to have two conjured creatures and I'm imagining this could actually work uh, with this mod, uh, but I'm not sure. If anybody knows different, let me know in the comments below. Okay, we'll take a bit of a closer look at these and we'll start with the Bone Men, which are black skeletons found within the Soul Can. Interestingly, this is probably the one most of you would initially get, as it's the only one that doesn't require a Soul Husk. Anyway, his recipe is a Bone Meal, Soul Gem and Frost Souls. He's actually quite effective using a level Drogger Bow, uh, which gives anywhere between 8 and 14 points. Ancient Nord Arrows give you 10 points and his attributes are Resist Frost, Resist Poison and Water Breathing. And next up is the Mist Man and these are floating ghostly undead found within the Soul Can. And the recipe for these are a Soul Husk, a Soul Gem and a Bone Mill. He attacks with a Frostbite and Ice Spike, and he'll attack with his hands if his magic runs dry, but he's fairly weak. You don't really want him doing that. Um, attributes are Resist Frost for 25 points, Resist Poison, uh, Water Breathing, and he's immune to Paralysis. And last but no means least is the Rough Man, which are drug like skeletal found on, in a Soul Can, um, wearing Nord armor and wielding two handed weaponry. Uh, Rathman have the highest health of any summons creature, and the recipe to get this guy is a Soul Gem Nord Helmet, Frost Salts, Bone Mill, and a Soul Husk. He's level 30, he's got massive health of 800, stamina of 475, only 10 magical though. He is resistant to frost damage, which is pretty cool. Uh, compared to the Conj uh, Conjured Dramora, um, he has far more health but deals less damage. Um, he's resistant to frost damage, as I said, but uh, vulnerable to fire. So it kind of makes him more useful uh, than the Dramora Lord against frost-based enemies but less useful against fire-based enemies obviously so all in all these are brilliant to get but there is the issue of the soul husk which is far as i can tell can only be found in the soul can uh, which will probably limit most people well for a while at least uh, to the bone man uh, but fear not it's quite effective uh, you'll probably have to use a healing spell on him far more than the wrath man but a range fighter alongside is never a bad thing and the wrath man is tanky i tell you he's really really tanky um yeah so i love these the, these are a great addition to the game as far as i'm concerned so there you go that's gallows hall you get a pretty average player home two unique helmets the ability to have a permanent undead summons and a really really good staff all in all i reckon it's pretty decent anyway catch you later love you